Kim, I'm streaming her live now. Hello everyone. How is everybody doing today? I hope you guys are all doing well. If you're local, I hope you have survived our online clear out sale. It has been a busy time of getting through everything on the sale and doing all of the sort and those things like that, getting everybody's purchases ready for them to pick up. It's always a fun challenge. While you guys are tuning in, I'm just going to get everything pulled up on my end here so I can follow along with you guys. And hopefully, hi Amber, how are you? And Ramona, and then hopefully, and Audrey. It's nice to see you guys. Long time no see for some of you. It's only been, well, you know, less than an hour. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not sure yet if one person that just left, I'm a little bit late getting on. I had uh, somebody picking up that I needed to hand some other things over to as well. So, hey, Michelle, how are you? Anyhow, one of you, it's only been just a few minutes since I saw you, but I am going to feature the A Little Latte Suite today. So hopefully you guys either have this in your collection or have been waiting to see some inspiration with this one. This one is a card I've actually previously shared in a photo version. Hi, Linda, but I have not shared the how-to yet. So I'm gonna create this card for you guys today. And I have something a little different coming up with it as well. Before I get started with creating the card, I wanted to just give you guys some information for some upcoming classes. And I had set, oh, I, my notes got moved here. Sorry about that. So I'm going to show you guys the cards that I shared with the Artisan Design team. Hi, Karen, how are you? The cards that I shared with the Artisan Design team with our Artisan assignment for this month, I think I showed them to you guys on a live previously, but I promised you I'd be back with class information, and I do have that ready for you. So I'm going to tell you guys what the date is and what the cost is should you decide you want to register today. Today the price is a little bit less because I can place your order with free shipping. So that is why it is a little bit short notice for today's pricing, but you can still sign up after today. It would just be a little bit more because then we would incur shipping fees. All right, so the ephemera class is going to be on... June 5th, which is a Wednesday, we will do that by Zoom. And what you will get for that class is, you're gonna actually get all of the ephemera packs and one pack of the card bases. I didn't actually use the second pack of the card bases in my card samples, so that is not a requirement with the class. However, Calming Creek is. So if you would like to make these cards, I will show them to you. Hi, Sharon, how are you? This card here is one of the ones that I designed for our artisan assignment. I also did this one here and this one here. So we will meet on June 5th by Zoom and the class will include this pack of card bases here, the Calming Creek cards and envelopes. It will also include Say Something Ephemera Pack something for everything ephemera pack, fully flowering ephemera pack, and labels and layers ephemera pack. So you will get all of those. The fee to do that class, if you decide to sign up today and let me know so that I can add your ephemera packs to my order that's going in tonight, will be $62. If you choose to sign up after today, it would be $70. There, if you're not local and you don't can't pick up your kit, then it would be plus shipping. So either $62 today or $70 after today, if you choose to register, and that will take place on June 5th by Zoom. If you can't join us that day, it will be recorded so you can always catch the replay as well. So hopefully that um, gives you guys the information that you need. If you are interested in it, please let me know as soon as possible if you want to get in on the um, on the free shipping related fee. And then I also have another class that I want to share with you guys now. 
just had to locate where I put my samples. I am going to pick three of my Take to the Sky cards and we are going to do them soon following the ephemera class with the hope that people can use them for Father's Day. So that will be the following Wednesday, June 12th. And that is going to be the Take to the Sky class. I may switch out this one here, but um, just so that people can make two of each card. But these are the cards that I designed when I did a presentation on the Take to the Sky suite when Genevieve Co was here in Winnipeg for a demonstrator event. So I presented with this suite and these are the cards that we made. So I'm going to pick either three of these and we'll do multiples or we will do singles of each and we will do all of them. So I just have to decide which, if you're interested in the class, feel free to comment with your vote. But I do have some class options here for you guys as well. Ignore the date on this flyer. This was just a mock flyer that I made for the event that I was teaching people how to put together a product included class. So for this one, option one will be $35. And actually, if you're interested in registering for this today, the prices will come down a little bit because these do have shipping included and today shipping is free. So option one at full price would have been 35. You get a half a pack of DSP and then the supplies to make the cards. Option two would be 45, which includes a half a pack of DSP, the basic gray and smoky slate pearls and the supplies to make the cards. And then option three is 125. It includes a full pack of DSP, basic gray and smoky slate pearls and the adventurous sky bundle. So that one will be on June 12th. All right, so that is what I wanted to share with you guys today. And I will have some, oh, the DSP shares also, sorry. I do have a price on those that will be minus the shipping fees as well. It will be $65 if you're interested in doing the DSP shares for today's price, but I will come back to you guys after today with prices that would have the shipping built in because after today, um, I wouldn't be able to get them if it doesn't fill up. By the end of tonight so anyhow we will get started on our card in just a moment now one last thing before i get into the card the starter kit special is still on so in canada it is 135 to join you get to pick 130 165 and product of your choice and then for the month of may stampin up is going to give you all of this product here. So you are going to get the in color stamp pads, the in color cardstock, the in color DSP, and the in color markers on top of the $165 that you get to pick. Now this value doesn't change after today with the no shipping ending after today because the shipping is always free on the starter kit. So I will put that aside and one last thing, which is not gonna be part of the class, but just to give you some extra inspiration with those ephemera packs. I did show you guys this um, a couple weeks ago when it published, but this is the scrapbook page that I made to go with my artisan assignment featuring all of those little ephemera elements. So I had, um, so, even though we won't make this in class, you'll have lots of elements left over. So I use these ones here. This is actually from the Simply Said stamp set, but all of these little bits and pieces, this here, this one, bring that in closer, and this one here, are from the same tag. I just cut it in half so that I could use it in two different places and tie in different elements of the page. So I'll put that one aside and we will get into making our card. Hi, Louise and Jenny and Alma, Maureen. Thank you guys for tuning in. Where is everybody tuning in from today? I'd love to know where you guys are from. Okay, so we are gonna use the Latte Love Bundle, which is a part of the Little Latte Suite. I'm actually going to feature this suite throughout the rest of the week. So that's what's a little bit different. I often come to you guys with just random stamp sets from one day to the next but i'm going to focus on this one throughout the week and then after today's live so i'll have the information ready for you tomorrow we've just been swamped with this online sale we've had going so i didn't have a chance to finish the details but for tomorrow's project i'll have the details ready for you on what 
amount you can spend in order to earn this week's card kits. But we will feature this one throughout the week. And today I'm going to kick that off with this card here for you guys. It's pretty simple, but I enjoyed making that one. So the latte, little latte suite has all of these products. I just want to show you quickly the suite first and then we will get into making these cards. Now, the one thing you might notice is this um, embossing folder that I used on this card, because I made this one more than a month ago anyway, is no longer available. This was from the 3D Basics. I loved that set, I'm sad that it's gone, but it is no longer available. So for today's card, I'm actually going to use this one which is in the new annual catalog. It is the Dashing Designs 3D embossing folder. So that's what I'm gonna to use today instead. And then I have a little technique to show you guys here where I did not fully emboss the layer of cardstock. So the suite as a whole is right now unavailable because these elements are not available. Everything else is, it's just the adhesive backed swirl dots that are on back order or out of stock at the moment. But once they come back in, you can always add those to a future order. Or if you already have them, then you're in luck. Then we have the Latte Love stamp set and all of these dies to go with them. And now that we have silver foil paper back, you can cut this element and other elements out with your silver foil paper. So I will do my best to make sure that at least one of our cards throughout the week has those elements in silver foil. I actually only use this one die today. I'll be using this one for the paper and I will be cutting it out of the DSP. So there's not a lot of stamping today. And then we also have the natural jute trim with these polka dots that are from that suite as well. And that is available at the moment. All right. And then these are some of the patterns of DSP. I will pull these out quickly to show them to you so that you can see what all is included in the DSP. Sometimes it's a little hard to see them online. And then you can also see how these elements coordinate nicely with the dies. We have that one and one more. So you could treat that like a uh, coffee swirl or wood grain kind of passes for either. But we have this pattern here and then these coffee beans on the other side. And we've got this one here, the swirl and little patterns, the, oh, what is that? The froth on top. Then we have these ones here that coordinate with some of these dies here. Hi, Lynn. So we've got those. Now we have more. This one has little tiny coffee cups on the back. This one I love, these coffee beans. Who here are coffee drinkers? Are you coffee or tea or neither? I like both. So we've got this one. I like coffee and then fruit tea is what I like for tea. We've got these pretty coffee cups and then a little bit of coffee rings on the back. I'm actually gonna use both sides of this pattern today. And then we have this one with these stripes on the back. I started off with this one. You can see I cut that little chunk out of there. Tea drinker, what kind do you drink, Ramona? Fruit tea? Um, but it was too bold, I didn't love that one, so I switched it out for this. All right, so those are the patterns from the A Little Latte, and I'm actually going to cut that while we're here today. I did not pre-cut the DSP. Neither, Amber, so what do you like to drink? It's always interesting to see what people enjoy to stay hydrated, or I guess I don't know that I could say I stay hydrated with coffee because isn't it, uh, doesn't it dehydrate you? All right, so I have a couple of supplies ready. I have a thick white card base. It is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. Decaf Earl Grey, oh, cinnamon tea. I do love cinnamon tea as well. And then I have a four by five and a quarter basic white. And this one is the one I'm going to texture, stamp on, and then also layer the DSP on. So first I am going to do this little element here and then we will texture it. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. I need to bring in my Simply Scored. I'm gonna just move that aside for a minute and I will give you guys some measurements. All right, so 
from the top down, I'm going to create a score line, neither, only water. I do love lots of water too. All right, so this one is going to be at two and a half. So I'm gonna score, I can just try to see what you guys are seeing. Two and a half in from this end here. And then I'm also going to score up from the bottom. And this is going to be one and a quarter. So I'm gonna come in one and a quarter from this end here, so that's gonna take me to four. Okay, so I've got, I scored at two and a half and four. And then I'm actually going to use the side where it's raised as the front of my card. So I'm gonna put the Simply Scored away now. And I have some Pool Party ink and a blending brush that I am going to blend a little bit of ink first. So it's probably hard to see it, but there's a little bit of pool party blended in this section here. So first of all, I need some large stick knives. Sorry for the screech here of my drawer. I had some other large ones handy and I don't know where those went. So I'm going to mask off right up to that score line. And then I'm also going to mask off, I just have to turn this so that I can see it, up to this score line. So all I want access to is this flat panel in the middle. Now I'm going to just pick up my ink here with my blending brush and just tap off first in case you have, mine needs re-inking, so I probably don't have much to tap off first, but in case you have a really inky pad, you don't wanna put that first blot right in the middle there. So just tap that off first and then we're just gonna blend a little bit of pool party right over here. Sorry, you're gonna get a little bit of camera shake first. Okay, so there's just a little bit of pool party there. Now we can, I'm actually gonna leave that there for a second. And I am going to bring in my pecan pie blends. And we're gonna try doing this with a different method than I usually do. So to create just a little bit of splatter, I'll bring this a little closer again. You can see there's a little bit of splatter here. I am going to close my pool party ink and we're gonna see if we can create a little bit of splatter just by knocking the blends with a bone folder. So I will bring this closer so you can see. But this method of creating a splatter is a little more friendly to the tip of your marker than if you were to flick it inside the lid of your marker. It does sometimes, the tip is a little bit too firm for this to work, but it seems to work nicely most of the time. So now I can peel this off and you'll see that there's a little bit of pool party ink there and a little bit of the pecan pie splatter in that area there. Now, I am also going to do some stamping, but first what I'll do is add this texture. So I need to bring in the stamp cut and emboss machine. I will often do whatever I need to do with the stamp cut and emboss machine off camera, but I want you guys to see how I am going to just do a partial embossing here. And I just need to grab a different plate. Okay, so we're gonna remove these plates here. We don't need all of these extra ones when we're using a 3D folder. With a 3D folder, we just need this one here. So I'm gonna get that ready. And in order to emboss only up to this without squashing, uh, right up to here, without squashing that, what I'm going to do is I'm only gonna place this in my folder right up to that line so I can see that my score line is lined up with the bottom of the pattern. Now, for an extra measure, what I'm gonna do here 
is I'm going to scoot this over. I'm going to take this edge of my gray plate, I'm tucking that in here, and this is only going to go right up to that edge there. So I'm not placing this past where that edge is so that it doesn't leave an indent in the rest of my cardstock. So now I should be able to just crank this through and we should have texture only right up to that line. And then I kind of want a little more emphasis on that line. I probably went a little too far. So now I'm actually just gonna rescore that line so that I still have that little bit of an indent. So the nice part is with that technique, if you have a score line, is that you can always add it back in. So I am going to just make sure though, that I put this face down and then because I want the raised score line, so that's why I'm putting this face down. And then I'm just gonna redo that. Now I don't wanna go so hard that it tears it, but now that line is nice and emphasized again. So that is how you can do a partial embossing. The same theory would apply if you wanted a partial cut. You would just, if it was a die as opposed to an embossing folder, you would just put the plate up to where you wanted it to cut. I hope that makes sense. If anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to ask. All right, so that is our partial embossing. Now I'm gonna go ahead with this little splatter and some pecan pie. I'm gonna just get that ready. And so I chose the, this one's on me and this splatter here. I'm going to use both early espresso and pecan pie. So we're gonna use pecan pie for the splatter. This is, uh, we're not actually gonna use that big of a block. That will be overkill. All right. Oh, didn't wanna pick that up. Sorry, that was loud in your ear. And now I like to put my greetings on my blocks by putting them face down first and then picking them up with the block. I find that a little bit easier. So we'll begin with this little splatter and then actually I forgot that I have little coffee rings on there too. So we need one more. I'm gonna do this one. And we will pick that up here. How many of you guys own this bundle? It's been around for a little bit in the online exclusives. All right, so that is inked up with pecan pie. I don't want to make, place this fully on my white. I want it a little bit over the edge. So we're gonna go right there. And then I am going to use, because I haven't yet die cut my paper, I am going to use my die as a guide. I want to show a little bit of this splatter but I want to see a little bit of this ring. So I'm using that just as a guide so that I can see where to place this. Now that I see where that can go, I can move that die out of the way and stamp the coffee rings. You do have this bundle, it's very cute. I haven't had a chance to play with it too much. Now I just wanna wipe that little bit of pecan pie off. There we go. So that's most of that stamping. Now we can put pecan pie away and I don't wanna lose my little die because I'm gonna to need to use that. Now I have early espresso and I wanna stamp this little greeting above that bottom score line. I feel like this would be a cute um, thank you card if you wanted to give someone a gift card for a coffee shop or a friend you haven't seen in a while and you wanna take them out for coffee or just treat them, somebody's going through a hard time and you wanna send them a little coffee gift card in the mail. There we go. So this one's on me. Now that is all of the stamping we need to do. Now we'll set that aside and I need to cut into this paper. It always feels a little bit sad chopping into paper, but it's worth it for this really pretty image. So I'm going to bring in my cutter 
so that I can be strategic about where I cut this strip here. I My favorite is this coffee cup. So I wanna preserve all of these if possible. So I don't wanna cut a strip here because then I'll lose this coffee cup here. Now, there was probably this one here. I'm not gonna have enough room to cut this wide of a piece because that is not four inches wide. My piece of cardstock here is four inches wide. So I need a four inch strip and I'm okay cutting right off of here because I will be able to get a one and a quarter by four piece across here. That pattern is what's on the back here. So I am going to chop it off of here and then that way I'm preserving these ones that I really love. The other ones are really cute too. I just, I know that I will tend to use these ones. So I'm going to put this edge here up to the four inches here because I want four inches wide from right here. So I'm going to slice this up to the one and a quarter. I'm gonna to try to do this without getting my head right in your way. That's probably much too high. So I'm gonna bring this down further. So this is this end to the four inches and then I slice down to one and a quarter. Now I can rotate this and tuck this edge to the one and a quarter and I will slice from the end into four inches. Just make sure your paper's on there straight. There we go. So now all I have cut off is the portion that I need. And I have preserved as many of those coffee cups as I can so that I can die cut them. So now I've got the piece that I need there and I'll cut into here and I'll get that little coffee cup that I want so that I can die cut it. So here's where I'll use my snips and we're just going to come in here Cut as closely as we can while still leaving enough room for the die cut and then we'll die cut this so while I gather things for the for die cutting if you are just tuning in I will be featuring this bundle all week and I just have to sort out the details of how many cards you're going to get and what the spending is. But if you're interested in purchasing this suite, then you would qualify to get the free cards for next week if you want to make sure you get an order in today while free shipping is in place. I'm going to just bring in my mini machine now and then I will show you guys cutting this little cute little coffee cup. So today is the free shipping day. We love free shipping. Nobody ever loves to have to pay shipping, right? Okay, so we're going to, just wanna get that little card stock off so it doesn't make an indent in my coffee cup. And we are going to, I have some post-it tape. We are going to tape this coffee cup or the coffee cup die down to this beautiful, this is my favorite one. Anyone that knows me is probably not surprised that this is my favorite one. It's a little tricky to get it lined up, but there's always a little bit of wiggle room. So if you have to in the end, you can always fussy cut a little bit after. <laughs> I probably had to do that on my first one. All right, so the mini machine is great for when you have little things like this and not a lot of room on your table. You can quickly just bring that in. There we go. And it turned out pretty well. Yes, Linda, I love free shipping too. With our online sale that we just had, a bunch of the vendors used their credit to place their orders today with free shipping. So I stayed up to help make sure we got those in last night so that we didn't uh, lose things to inventory being out of stock. Never know what will happen with that, right? Okay. So now we have our little coffee cup. We have our strip of DSP. There we go. And we are almost done. So what do you guys think of the two different embossing folders? Now that we can't get this one, what do you guys think of this one? This one, if you're just tuning in, is called Dashing Designs. Now the other one that I think is really fun I, I didn't choose to use it on this one, but cute crochet. Look at that one. That one's super cute. I can't wait to play with that one. And I feel like coffee and crochet or tea and crochet go together. 
Now I have a spool of linen thread that I need to use and my paper snips. So I distressed the edges, especially when I have a really clean design with white on white. I like to distress the edges just a little bit. I'm not, however, going to distress the part here until I put, you know what we'll do, we'll glue this down first and then I can do that. Makes no sense to uh, distress it and then put this on and then have to distress it again. So we'll just put this on and do it once. It does, now that you say that, that's totally bounty, isn't it? I'm gonna just, that's gonna be the bounty folder now. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that and pointed that out. That is hilarious. It's the bounty folder. Makes me wonder, is that where they got that design from? <laughs> yes, Ramona, I agree, they go together. Okay, so now we have the folder. Now I'm actually going to, that's fine there, because we're gonna wrap the linen thread, it's gonna go around there twice, and then we're gonna tie a bow. So I'm actually gonna snip this off. This end has gone a little wonky, and I like how the rest has a little bit of curl. So rather than frustrating myself, I'm just going to cut that off. This can get used for something else later, but I am going to cover that up. I am gonna start, my bow is gonna end up about right here. Hi, Michelle, how are you? So what I like to do is start where my bow is gonna end off and I leave enough to tie a bow with. So for one side of the bow, and then I'm gonna hold that there. I'm gonna wrap around twice. Okay. Now I'm gonna hold that together and I'm going to leave an equal tail for the other side and snip that off. And now this is where my little trick comes in. I have some little itty bitty glue dots here if you have the regular glue dots, you can fold one in half and that will work well as well. So what I'm gonna do here, I have one tail trailing off this side, one trailing off this side. I want my bow to be about right here. So right in around an inch in from the left. So I've put that on top of this layer of twine or linen thread. And now I am going to tie a knot and I'm gonna tack that, see there, I've got my knot. I am going to tack that down to that little glue dot. So now that's gonna hold that knot in place and it is so much easier to tie a bow now that that knot is held in place than when it's falling loosely and coming apart. It's just a lot higher, harder to tie a bow. Now you can see I need to cinch back this bow or this loop compared to this loop. I find if I hold the knot steady and just kind of guide that, I'm holding my finger on this loop and I'm holding the knot while I gently pull this, the bows or the loops will stay fairly straight. If you just pull on it, it tends to let it curl and twist and then you don't get um, nice even sides or straight sides of your bow. They just twirl up and twist and then it's hard for it to stay flat. So that's how I like to tie a bow. And then I've got these curly tails. So I could trim them down a little bit, but by taking that flat part off first, I was able to keep the nice curl of the linen thread. If that's the look you like, then that is how I tie a bow. All right, now we have the cup to put on and we have this layer to put on the base. But first I was telling you guys about distressing the edges just a little bit. So this is where I am going to just distress this a little bit here. And then I'll just distress the edges here too. So just a tad. I don't go crazy with it, but just I don't want to cut those linen thread tails. There we go. So that's all we need. Now I'm going to dimensional this layer down. So 
sorry, just had to grab the dimensionals. So what are your guys' thoughts on those new embossing folders? I really like them. I tend to usually pick one that's like a staple in my crafting. I loved the subtle folder. We were just talking about that one today. I used that one a lot. And then of course the, I called it crosshatch. This one here, to me, this was crosshatch. So I loved that one, but we don't have it anymore. Oh, I'm glad Karen that you like that tip. I use that with linen thread. I use it with baker's twine. And sometimes even if you just need to tie a little knot in your ribbon to um, tuck a glue dot and you could use a regular size glue dot behind your knot always helps to keep it steady. So now this layer here can go on there. And next we're going to dimensional this little coffee cup. Now, if you wish to, please feel free to share the video. And if you do, just come back and comment to let me know that you have. And at the end of the week, I will, for those of you who participate in the, um, the um, class with purchase, if you wanna make these cards, I will, for when they come back in stock, I will do a draw for these little gems. So if you participate in the purchase this week and then just comment that you shared. I'm just snipping the dimensionals in half so I can get this ready. So tomorrow I'll come back with the full details on that. I was trying to get it all ready before I came live today. It's just been a little nutty with the, thanks Ramona, online sale, sorting and cross-checking everything. It, it's fun though. And it's always fun to see what people sell and then <laughs> be taunted by it when you didn't, weren't the one that bought it. All right, so that is on dimensionals. And I'm going to just tuck this a little bit over the linen thread right up to the bow so that you can still see a little bit of the coffee ring and a little bit of the splatter. And then because I do, even though you can't get them right now, I was able to get these gems before and they will be back. I should have checked what date they said they would return, but these are the adhesive backed swirl dots. And I liked these darker ones. So that is the ones that I went with. And they are all one size. Sometimes I struggle when we don't have more than one size of an embellishment, but I actually didn't mind how these ones turned out. So I used three of this color. So I put two on the left, I'll bring that closer in a minute, and then I tucked one in here beside the greeting. So I'll just tuck those back in. I like to um, keep my gems in the clear mount cases. So I usually, I'll bring that card closer in just a minute. I usually put these all the way back in their case or their package, and then I tuck that back into here and then they are on my stamp shelf and I have them all organized like that. All right, so I put two right here and one here. So that is my, this one's on me, a little latte card. I hope you guys like that one. I love this coffee cup. I am going to need to use other colors throughout the week so that we don't have everything just in this color. But um, yeah, so if, if you're interested in the class or if you know you may want to make these cards and you want information today, then I will be working out this detail as soon as I get off the live. So if you want information on that before I place my order tonight that qualifies for free shipping, I still have another order to place. And you can either order online with this host code here, or I can tag, ta ah, can't speak, tack it onto the bulk order that I have going in. So even orders under $100, if you submit them to me, I can put them in with my bulk order and that way you can still get free shipping. If you are wanting to place it online yourself and it's more than 100, then you can use this host code. You can still qualify for that free class if that's what you want it to go towards. You just have to message me to let me know. Now, if your order is over $200, you don't wanna use this. You wanna be able to claim those rewards yourself. So 
just message me if you need help deciding what is the best way to go with your order. Again, free shipping is for the rest of today only, which in Manitoba, that's 1 a.m. Central Time or wherever you are in Canada, you would just have to watch for Midnight Mountain Time is the deadline for free shipping for today. So I will hop off this live in just a moment. Again, if you want to participate in the DSP shares or if you want to do my ephemera class on, I'll just grab that date one more time if you're just tuning in, June 5th. We will be making these cards here. You'll get the full packs of the ephemera. You will actually have enough to make two cards. I'll give you all the supplies that we can do one of each. I will add in the embellishments for you, but um, you would have enough if you want to use different embellishments to make doubles because you get two of every sheet in the ephemera packs. So we will be making these cards together in that class. That one is... Sorry, I just kicked something here. I just have to recap the price, 62. If you register today or it is 70, if you register after today, because after today there will be shipping. And then if you want to do any of the, if you wanna do the Take to the Sky cards, which will be an assortment of these ones here, that is the following week, June 11th. And you can choose from different levels of sign up. You can do the $35 option, which gives you a half a pack of DSP, $45, which gives you a half a pack and the gems, which I used on here, the Smoky Slate and Basic Gray Pearls, or option three is 125, and that gives you the full pack of DSP, the Basic Gray and Smoky Slate Pearls, and the Adventure Sky Bundle. So now again, with these ones though, I would actually drop the price a little bit because you will save the shipping today. These prices were built with shipping included and today is free shipping. So if you are interested in that and you know today you wanna to sign up and you wanna save a little bit because it's free shipping, just message me as soon as possible and I will know to include that for you. But no pressure on any of those, just wanna make sure I got that out to you guys today with a little bit of an opportunity to save a bit of money on those shipping charges. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. I will post to tell you what time I'm going to go live tomorrow. It may have to be evening again, but I do wanna come at least once during the day. So I will continue to come back tomorrow and Thursday and Friday. And then my hope is to do another series next week for you guys. So this week we are featuring a little latte. And if you have any questions, message me. Otherwise, I will post and tell you guys when I will be back tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.